This was a real test for an RAF helicopter. It's a Wessex, and if you're technically minded, you'll see it was a twin turbine Wessex. The date, the 7th of May, 1969. The job, picking up a monstrous 60-foot fiberglass spire, flying it and landing it safely. It is eventually to be placed on Ashbridge College Chapel, we hope. The place? Dunstable, a favourite place for gliders. You can see Dunstable Downs in the background as the machine encounters those turbulent winds well known to glider pilots. As the helicopter approaches the dropping zone, the spire begins swinging like a giant pendulum. The ground crews wait. To cushion the landing, they've laid out bales of straw. A Wessex can lift 4,000 pounds. The Spire weighs 35 hundredweight, so there's not much margin. And unfortunately, on landing, the Spire does sustain some structural damage. So it's back to the drawing board. No, not as bad as that. The design was modified, and it was a case of, if at first you don't succeed, well, fly, fly, fly again. This is it, their D-Day. It was in fact June the 6th, a morning with just enough wind. The ground team have been welding special skates to the lifting cradle to make sure of the correct place for takeoff. And this time, the spire must go accurately into position on top of the chapel. army group prepares the slings which are for hand hauling it into place. The contractors team are briefed by the officer in charge of the air crew. The pilot, is the same one who did the test flight, carefully steps out the distance between the spire and the walls of the college. There's no room for any mistakes. The spire length is fitted with its slings and cables. Water is sprayed on the ground to lay the dust a rising helicopter always throws up. Away she goes. There's a moment of anxiety. Will the timbers placed inside the spire fall out as in the launching of a ship? They do. The helicopter is now 200 feet up over the chapel. The spire has to be hauled down by hand. See those slings? so that it can enter the steel framework accurately. It's rather like one of those docking jobs in outer space. It was touch and go. The pilot 
knew he had only enough fuel for another three minutes flying time, so he didn't hang around. But the job's not quite over. The pilot has a quick cup of tea during refueling and his colleagues prepare for the final touch. The weather vane which has to go atop the spire. A quick spring release sling is fixed to the base of the ferrule. No weight problems here but a devil of a job for accuracy. By now, the pilot has the measure of it. Perhaps you can just spot a thin nylon cord connecting the spigot of the weather vane. It's been hauled in by a Spider-Man inside the spire itself. They say the spigot must fit the top bearing sleeve, and so it does. A job well and truly done, a team job, both aloft and on the ground. The chopper chunters away, and there, against the clear blue sky, are spire and cross and weather vane complete.